Good day to you. My name is Maria Gonzielska and this is Poland Daily Culture. Here in the studio I have George Boczyński, the editor of British Pulse. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. And we were talking in the previous episode about the story of Sergiusz Papliński, veteran, later on an artist and also a person who is extremely important for Polonia in Britain. And uh, we ended up in the moment when he was, uh, he was trained to, uh, to fight against the Soviets in Britain, but uh, later on he was looking for a different job and discovered an artistic talent. Yes, uh, the whole story of how he became an artist was uh, quite hilarious when you think about it, because um, his... Um, uh, commanders told him that he needs to find a job and go to the university and have an education. And he said, what am I supposed to do? I don't know anything. I just know how to shoot. And um, they told him, no, you must pick something else. And he had a friend nicknamed Yelen who told him, why don't you attend an art school, an art academy? And he thought, you know what, why not? And the reason why he picked that school was because apparently they were the most beautiful girls uh, uh, studying at, uh, at an art school. So that's what he admits uh, after the years was the real reason why he picked that school. But he found a talent. He knew uh, he had a connection uh, to it. Uh, when he had an interview to join the university, uh, he, um, he spoke about going away from his past and finding himself in his art in a way that he would want to forget about the horrors, the blood, the, the, the nightmares, the, the gloomy past and look at the future, which was supposed to be bright and beautiful. And that's what we can see in his paintings today. They're all very colorful. colorful. It's, it's sort of a surrealist cubism. And you can really tell that he, by painting, tried to go away from what he, what he suffered before. Yes, because we don't see the war in his paintings, but there are uh, women, women, for example, playing piano or horses, or um, I would say other, or like people shaped a little bit in a cubism way, surrealistic, but with elements which like very characteristic of, I would say, the, the, his characters, which he picked up and painted. Uh, but they are very shiny and beautiful, colorful, I would cheering up, I would say. Uh, it, it catch your attention. And what's, what's pretty like uh, remarkable is the fact that when you enter a Sergius uh, apartment, in London, it's like entering an art gallery, which you don't expect um, when, when, you, when you think about entering the apartment of a, uh, of a partisan or of a veteran. Mm, but I know that uh, Sergius also, he doesn't really, he doesn't like to sell his paintings, but, uh, but he makes a lot of uh, parties there and kind of tries to unite uh, Polonia in London. He does exactly uh, that. He doesn't want to sell his paintings. He calls them his children. Um, so anybody who has a chance to, 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 to own one of his paintings should be really uh, honored and, and happy. Um, his place is a bit like a shrine. You know, it's very unusual. Um, Anybody who walks in there doesn't want to leave because his whole apartment is completely covered with the paintings. There's not even a, a single place where you can see the wall. And, um, and it's the Sergius spirit who is in there. And he will not let you go if you hadn't had your drink. And straight away, whenever a lady comes, he offers a wine. Whenever a gentleman comes, he offers them something stronger. Um, it's really a powerful place and many meetings uh, had taken place place there and uh, Sergius is a, is a wonderful uh, host. One thing because well let's say he had a very rich life he's 93 years old right now a lot of years in London also connected to society and uh, there is a book about a woman who uh, took down the British Parliament and so how is Sergius involved in the story? So 
I think that's not a secret. Sergis had many women. And uh, some of them were actually enormously popular. So he was with a, a daughter of a prime minister. They had many meetings. She's and uh, she's writing about him um, uh, in uh, her biography. There are many books that you can actually find Sergius' uh, name. And yes, when the uh, British government collapsed because of a certain lady that had meetings both with the uh, Russian ambassador and the British uh, defense minister uh, in. Her her memoirs, you can also find plenty of pages about Sergius. And uh, it's quite uh, uh, funny because she writes that he was that man that would be impossible to flirt with because he was so serious about his job as head of the security. And um, she would approach him and try and try for many weeks. And he would say, sorry, I'm just here doing my job. I'm not interested in any private matters with you. Uh, yet eventually um, he agreed. Uh, but that's, that's uh, what you can find in uh, many very interesting books. Uh, so Sergis indeed uh, is a living legend. Now you can meet him sometimes in London in uh, Ognisko Polskie. So I was here, fire, fire, Polish fireplace in South Kensington, uh, a, a very also important place for for Polonia, where he sometimes drinks coffee there or eats dinner, and his uh, the exhibition of his paintings um, are there also. Especially there was one for his birthday, yes. Yes, so, you know, sadly, because of the pandemic, uh, Sergius couldn't live the way uh, for many, for a long time, he couldn't live the way he loves because he's a, a, a I don't want to say maybe party animal, but he's a very social person. Every day for him has to um, combine of uh, meeting friends, of going, eating Polish food, and uh, that's him. And during the pandemic, all of that was uh, taken away from him. So he, he, it, was, it was a really tough period. But during that time, friends would bring him deliveries from the uh, Polish half club, Ognisko, of uh, pierogi, barszcz, and all the other lovely food that, that he uh, enjoys. So he's still a living soul of, uh, of, I would say, Poland, and also a testimony of all of those veterans and everyone who needed to flee Poland after the war because of the fights here and needed to find their place uh, away in the West and find also their job. And as he found himself to be an artist eventually, painting uh, paintings, but many didn't. Even, even Polish generals didn't, didn't know what to do after the war. And there's, I would say, a tragedy about it, which, which we sh shouldn't forget, because the war for them didn't stop in uh, '45. Yes, absolutely. Uh, sadly, uh, some of the most notable uh, Polish generals and officers uh, were not provided any uh, support by the British government, and uh, they just had to earn a living by doing anything that they could, and many of them were simply trained soldiers, so there weren't many uh, career paths uh, for them if there was no war. I mean, some of them uh, went to Africa, you have Zumba, you have a lot of you know, Polish pilots uh, helping to create the Pakistani Air Force, so you have some of those stories, but uh, very often they were simply depressed, uh, confused, lost. Many would argue that the fact that they could live in Britain was already helpful, and I certainly agree with that, because the British government could just simply send all those uh, Polish soldiers back to uh, Poland, occupied Poland, where they wouldn't meet the, the best uh, faith. So the fact that they were allowed to stay, I think, uh, is, is something to, to, to respect and uh, be happy about. Although they were, the way they were treated um, could have been slightly better. Yeah, but Sergius still find a, his way through it, and it's persevered in his paintings. And also, that's a message for you. Go and check the paintings of Sergius Papliński, Kafka, because they are very beautiful, and might maybe after years, you will find them in art galleries. I certainly keep my fingers crossed for it. And thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.